Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I'm going to start you off on your Saturday morning talking about Bitrix. Um, this was a tweet that I saw from Bitrix. Um, Bitrix Community Bitrix has uh, been approved as a money transmitter in the state of Nebraska. We're excited to welcome Nebraska customers to join our USD markets. Um, check back for additional updates. Now, I don't talk about Bitrix a lot on this channel. Bitrix is um, a, a, an X-Rapid partner um, with Ripple, is my understanding. Um, they are in the United States. It's a, it's a good exchange. I've used them a lot. But the only thing I haven't done is gone and gotten set up to um, withdraw um, into a USD bank account. I have not done that with Bitrix because when I went to, to look at doing it, it looked like a an overcomplicated process and I, so I did not fool with it because I already had some other options but um, it is a good exchange they have a lot of digital assets on that exchange and so you should definitely look at them if you're if you're needing an option in the United States um, okay moving along this is from crypto bond 007 at bond 007 underscore crypto Please, everyone, retweet this and join in with Digital Asset Investor and others on not using Coin Market Cap anymore. They have been, ha have been, and still are shady towards XRP's market cap. It's not just that; it, that's one of the things. Um, but they're also, uh, like I was talking, I was talking about it yesterday. Um, Coin Market Cap will not address uh, several things. First of all, they got rid of the the Korean. Um, pricing in, in in the market and so they don't include that at all to my knowledge anymore um, and then yesterday we were asking I'm trying to remember what I was asking them about yesterday but we, we've asked them to it was about upholds somebody had brought to my attention that they don't put upholds volume on there they don't put upholds on there they won't they won't address whether or not they're going to include SBI virtual currencies volume on there and so it's kind of like they're they just snub the XRP community at every turn so I'm looking at, at other at using uh, other sites now, and I'm going to give you an idea right now. This is one that someone sent to me, CoinGecko.com. That's C-O-I-N-G-E-C-K-O.com. This one is a pretty well put together site. Um, I'm not saying this is the one I'm going to be using from now on, but this is just one idea. Any of you that have any good ideas besides this? Send them to me. I know about Live Coin Watch, but I don't think I know of too many others. But I am definitely going to start using um, a different site when I show you things. And, uh, until and unless Coin Market Cap decides to actually uh, listen to their customers, I'm not going to show you their website anymore on this channel. Um, okay, next, this is from XRP Yoda. At the 2:30 mark in this video. Um, <laughs> we, I've talked a lot in the past about how, um, and I've compared it to the Harry Potter movies, how the Lord Voldemort, um, nobody will say his name. They call him he who, uh, I'm trying to remember the wording, uh, he who must not be spoken of or something to that effect. You, they don't ever say his name because he's so, he's so evil and so dangerous and ripple and XRP is this kind of the same way. There, there are people across the media and uh, across the blockchain industry that will not say the words Ripple or XRP no matter what. If you ask them about it, they might answer a question and then move on really quickly. So this clip illustrates this perfectly. They, they do an entire uh, two minute and 30 seconds. The entire thing is about Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that, just like it, everything always is on CNBC and everywhere else. Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that. And then the the uh, lady that's on the show, I, I can't remember her name, but she is the, okay, her name's Melissa Lee. It's right here. Melissa Lee is the only person that constantly, it's almost like she's throwing a jab at the Bitcoin people when she brings it up, but she's the only one that constantly brings it. Well, what about Ripple? 
And so she says something about Ripple. And he, he quickly, they're talking about JP Morgan coin. And he says, well, JP Morgan coin is just going to be used by them. And then, but then he says, Ripple is used by, in it, Ripple's used in every bank. And then he moves and, and then they cut. It's like they cut really quickly to something else. <laughs> but anyway, this is from XRP Yoda. So give him a follow for providing this. Um, interesting stuff. Okay. This is from Sergeant OB1 at Sergeant OB1. Um, the year of blockchain is here, claims Capitol Hill Top Gun. I want to read you just a couple of things that this guy said. This is Tom Emmer. He's, he's with the Congressional Blockchain Caucus. He's the chairman um, of the Congressional Blockchain Caucus. Isn't it cool that we have a caucus now? Um, Congressional Blockchain Caucus chairman on Capitol Hill, Tom Emmer, is making waves again this time predicting that 2019 will be blockchain's year. Um, and then this is his quote I want you to hear. Many, including those in this town, would like to focus only on blockchain and ignore or criticize cryptocurrency, he said. They will tell you, they will tell us uh, Bitcoin is used by criminals and the blockchain is the real innovation. It's true. There are illicit transactions, but that should not be reason to totally dismiss cryptocurrency that's and and folks this is kind of this is what the dialogue has been for the last few years oh blockchain even jamie Dimon, if you remember blockchain uh bitcoin that's a fraud but blockchain that's a real technology and then he comes out with his own cryptocurrency that has been the banner that they've been carrying and the truth of the matter is cryptocurrency is blockchain you you that you have to take them both and that's what everybody is learning right now. Um, and so that was just an interesting, but this is a, this is a congressman telling you this. These people are on board and they're going to help make this, make cryptocurrency, uh, adoption happen. Okay. This is from Leonidas. Give him a follow. This guy's, this guy puts out some great information. Um, he's at Leo H A D J I L O I Z O U. QB, an exchange based in Hong Kong that started its operation back in 2013, has announced the adoption, ad addition of XRP on its trading platform with BTC, ETH, USDT pairs. Cool. Adoption, folks. Um, I'm moving on from that, but that's, he, he, he constantly, I mean, it's, it's almost every day this guy's letting us know about a new exchange that has added XRP. This is volume and it's adoption, folks. And this liquidity. Okay. Now the next four things I'm about to show you are, are a, I'm starting to see a, a, a shift. Do you know how, you, you know how we've, we've talked about proof of work. We've, we've seen the 51% attacks and anybody with any common sense sees that and says to themselves, and this is what I've told you over and over. Imagine that you're a financial advisor and you have put, imagine that you have put your client's investment into a proof of work digital asset. And then you wake up one morning to read the paper and there's an announcement that that proof of work digital asset is undergoing a 51% attack. It's already happened. Okay. Now you've got to explain to your client why you invested their money in a digital asset that can be attacked and controlled by someone who has the majority mining power um, and, and they can attack, they can literally control it. Imagine having to explain that to your client, why you put them in something like that. Imagine if you're that financial advisor, what your liability is. Well, that's the point I made uh, when the Ethereum classic 51% attack was going on. I'm about to show you where it's not just me that is, um, that has that thought pattern. And that was kind of my question, you know, having been a financial advisor, not in a million years. And I'm, am I going to invest a client in something that, that can be controlled, let's say China or Russia or whoever can control that investment and take it on a dime, uh, because they want to. <laughs> and I've got to explain that to my client. There's way too much liability in that. That's what I've said in the past. I'm about to show you how it's not just, it's not just me thinking that it's the big boys that are thinking that that's part of the reason that your XRP investment is so valuable compared to these other, these proof of work, uh, 
digital assets. This is um, and this is how I'm going to start you out. I've got four pieces that I'll put all this together, and this is starting to happen. You and I are not taking crazy pills. We do own the greatest digital asset ever created. Okay, the first this is a this is a news article about yesterday. I told you that Ripple's website went down, and I wasn't even thinking about Ripple's website going down in this context. But what this article is about is, you know, we've heard over and over and over. Oh, Ripple XRP is centralized, and Ripple owns XRP, and they're one and the same, and all this. Well, when Ripple's website went down yesterday, a, uh, a a bit of a dialogue came up, and that's what this article is about. And the dialogue went like this. Well, Ripple's website just went down. Just like their company, let's say their company went down, went bankrupt. And when the website went down um, yesterday, what people were saying is that XRP is still the mark. XRP markets are still functioning, even though Ripple's website is down. And it kind of illustrated it was it kind of was just something that happened. The website goes down, but XRP stands on its own two feet. The XRP markets continued on, and it illustrated a point. And that point is, Ripple's website goes down or Ripple goes down. XRP is still doing its thing because it is decentralized. And I thought that that was a great illustration of what we've been saying all along okay next so this tweet right here i thought was interesting the professionals are uh ripple xrp all we hear is bitcoin 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 but now the nasdaq's head of blockchain product development has come out with this with this bitcoin is controlled by china anyway maybe it's time uh, to get real folks this is from the NASDAQ's uh, head of blockchain product. The problem with Bitcoin is that if something goes wrong, you don't have anyone to call. There's no one to sue or to get your money back. So if you get your, so, so if they get your private key, they can literally steal all your Bitcoins and there is no way for you to get them back. Um, and so this is the, the, I showed you something yesterday where they were talking about how many Bitcoins that Satoshi Nakamoto owns. And they don't even know who it is. And these same guys will point at Ripple and say, oh, well, they own a lot of digital asset. Meanwhile, they've got like legal agreements that bind them to do certain things with that XRP. You don't, they don't even know who Sadoshi Nakamoto is or if they, if, if that person or government or whatever decides to just dump it all at some point or whatever. No, that, that would completely tank the Bitcoin market. And they don't even know who the person is. Talk about a leap of faith. Okay. Okay, next. Now this, this was, um, I love it when David Schwartz gets in Twitter fights. There were some Bitcoin guys on Twitter. That's what this article's about. They were uh, trying to say negative things about XRP. And then uh, David Schwartz comes in and he says, and most importantly, the risk to Bitcoin is fundamental to the consensus al algorithm. It uses and cannot be mitigated. In the case of XRP Ledger, it's just a matter of the default trade-offs between synchronization, time, and security against an almost impossible attack. Proof of work has been a dead end for both decentralization and security. It's gotten more centralized, and we've seen 51% double spend attacks. By contrast, distributed agreement has gotten more decentralized, and it's clear how to mitigate these attacks in software. Um, and finally, and this is most important, what I want to show you is this article here. This is from The Block. Fidelity's Bitcoin Custody Business is Live. A conversation with Fidelity Digital Assets head Tom Jessup. Now, before I read for you what I'm about to read for you, and it's pretty huge, I want you to understand this is Fidelity Digital Assets. Fidelity manages over $7 trillion dollars. Talk about a company and some people that have liability who are dealing in the real world. Now, what I've told you and what I said a minute ago, liability is a real thing. Liability is important. If you have, you cannot put your client's money in something that it, where it can be 51% attacked and they can, and their investment can tank and you're liable. You're on the hook for putting their money in something like that. 
that you knew could be attacked. So listen to what Tom Jessup says. He's being asked by this Frank Chaparro. He's being asked, so you're just going to start your, your Fidelity Digital Assets with uh, Bitcoin, correct? That's what he asks him here. Listen to what Tom Jessup, who, who's going to run Fidelity Digital Assets, listen to what he says. I had to get a little sip of coffee there. He says, correct. We have what we call a business acceptance process where we have our crypto engineering team risk, compliance, etc. And we make pretty detailed decisions of what we're going to do next. The client, I'm, uh, the client I'm in now is in, is in the more liquid, higher market cap coins. But each one of those may have idiosyncrasies where we might say, even though there's client demand, we think there are reasons why it's not appropriate to list at this time. Now listen real close, folks, and feel really good about your XRP investment. Because he's about to say what we've been saying all along. He says, as an example, uh, an example that I might give you is Ethereum Classic. With the recent 51% attack, we would be thinking very carefully about the decentralization of that protocol or any protocol in other considerations before we'd even consider listing it. There's a lot of work that goes into deciding what's next. I think with Ethereum, there's a hard fork that's planned sometime later this year. Some upgrades. And so I think that that's something we're... we're where we just want to make sure there's progress in that direction and that and that the risk associated with that transition is understood. So Ethereum Classic, he, he specifically mentions that 51% attack. And I'm, I'm going to read that small part to you again. An example that I might give you is Ethereum Classic with the recent 51% attack. We would be thinking very carefully about the decentralization of that protocol or any protocol in other considerations before we'd even consider listing it. Wow, folks, he just now, he just told you. In other words, what, what they're really saying is Bitcoin, because of, because of its, because of its size maybe is less, but because of its market cap and it, it may be le less susceptible to a 51% attack at this point than an Ethereum Classic. But what he's just told you is proof of work does, does not work. Bitcoin may, may get through the door because it, it's had long enough to get big enough to not be as susceptible to those attacks. But Ethereum Classic doesn't cut it because proof of work doesn't cut it. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And tell your friends and family that proof of work does not work. Thank you for listening.